not last in long. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Welcome to Neshoba Valley Technical High School. We're going to begin shortly. Again, welcome to Neshoba Valley Technical High School. Um, I'm Dr. Janice Pigeon and proud to serve as the superintendent of this wonderful school district. Um, wonderful to see so many familiar faces and also wonderful to meet some new faces. Um, looking forward to being able to share with you all of the wonderful things that our students are doing um, in the school and share with you the outlook of our FY21 budget proposal in the coming year. Um, just to let you know a little bit about the agenda for today, we're going to go around the room and do some brief introductions so that we know who, um, who we're all enjoying breakfast with today. And then uh, we have a wonderful breakfast that's ready to be served by our culinary arts students. And then following that, um, when we're partway through breakfast, um, please go on and finish your meals. Um, I will come up and begin the presentation. You'll hear from, from me. You'll also hear from our principal, Mr. Jeremy Slotnick. And then we have some student presenters as well. Um, and we will hope to, to get through the presentation. I know some of you have a tight time schedule today. So again, welcome um, and thank you for coming. I'm going to pass the microphone around and we'll do quick introductions. I'm going to start with my right hand here um, and I will let you in her introduce herself. Good morning. I'm Jean Savoy. I'm the business manager here at Neshoba Valley Technical High School, and I wish you all a very warm welcome to our school, and I hope you enjoy the breakfast we, our students have provided for you. Good morning. Jeremy Slotnick. I'm the principal here at Neshoba Valley Technical High School. Hi, I'm Gabriella White. I am the director of curriculum, grants, and assessment here at the school. Good morning, I'm Joe B. O'Sullivan, Director of Post-Secondary and Community Education. Hi, my name is Brianna Schmoyer, I'm a senior in culinary. Hi, I'm Abby Cronin, and I'm a senior in marketing. Hi, I'm DJ Frazier, and I'm a senior in electrical. Good morning, I'm Margaret Scarsdale, I sit on the Pepperell Board of Selectmen. Andrew McLean, Town of Pepperell's Town Administrator. John Laddick, I'm the Chairman of the Pepperell Finance Committee. Good morning, I'm Sandra Proctor. I'm on the um, School Committee for Neshoba Tech. Good morning, Bill Greathead, Pepperell Board of Selectmen. Good morning, I'm Chris Prale. I'm the Air Representative for Neshoba Valley Tech School Committee. Good morning, Robert Pomperian, the Air Town Manager. Good morning, Andrea Fontaine, Air School Committee. Well, Neshoba School Committee for Air. Good morning, Joe Layden, Littleton Assistant Town Administrator. Good morning, Cheryl Herrick Stella, Finance Director, Town of Littleton. Hi, everyone. Nina Nazarian, Town Administrator in Littleton. Good morning, everyone. Charlie Ellis. I represent the town of Littleton as a school committee rep to Neshoba Valley Tech. Good morning. Gary Wilson, uh, Finance Committee Chair, Littleton. Good morning. My name is Chuck DeCoast. I am on the Board of Selectmen in Littleton. Good morning. Alan McRae, Finance Committee. <laughs> Paul Cohen, Chelmsford Town Manager. Donald Ayer, school committee member from Chelmsford. Pat Woges, Chelmsford Board of Selectmen. Michael McCall, assistant town manager, Chelmsford. Good morning, Darlene Lucier, town accountant for the town of Chelmsford. Virginia Timmons, uh, board of selectmen, town of Chelmsford. Dave Goslin, finance committee, Chelmsford. Lawrence McDonald, I'm one of the Chelmsford reps on the Neshoba Tech School Committee. Good morning, Sam Poulton, uh, one of Chelmsford's uh, representatives on the Neshoba School Committee. Uh, John Geiger, a member of the Select Board in Groton. Hi there, Mary Linsky, a member of the Finance Committee in Groton. 
Allison Manugian from the Groton Select Board. David Manugian, Groton Finance Committee. Hi, I'm Patricia Dufresne, Groton Town Accountant. Good morning, Michael Hartnett, Treasurer Collective for the Town of Groton. Hi, Jason Kelpie, uh, Town Moderator from Groton. Good morning, I'm Jody Ross, the town manager in Westford. Good morning, Elizabeth Almeida, chair of the Westford Select Board. Hello, I'm Beth Morrison from Westford and the Finance Committee. Hi, my name is Hari Vetsa. I'm the chair of uh, Finecom Westford. Dan O'Donnell, Westford Finance Director. Good morning, Gerilyn Bazakis from Townsend on the Finance Committee. Good morning, Lynn Pinkerton, Chair of the Finance Committee. Sam Grant, Finance Committee, Townsend. Sean O'Keefe, Chair of the Finance Committee, and Shirley. Sheldon Chapman, uh, School Committee Representative from Townsend. Karen Chapman, School Committee Rep from Townsend. Good morning, Steve Sheldon, Finance Committee Member, Townsend. Thank you everyone for introducing yourselves. I think it's really wonderful to take that opportunity to do that because again, as a regional vocational technical school district, we are proud to um, be represented by eight towns and I'm very happy that we have representation from all eight of our towns here at the breakfast this morning. I know last year when we went around and did introductions, I actually had folks um, say a little bit about their connection to Neshoba Tech and what I was most impressed with were how many of you in this room had either uh, attended Neshoba Tech as a student and again, I'm going to point out Mr. Charlie Ellis, the chairman of our school committee, who is a proud graduate of the first graduating class. And also, um, we have many people in this room. Raise your hand if you had a child graduate from Neshoba Tech. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, raise your hand if you've had another relative graduate from Neshoba Tech. Wonderful. So a lot, of, a lot of wonderful connections here. And Lawrence, I saw that you tried to put up more than one hand because you had um, a couple of children that graduated from here. So thank you. Again, um, our culinary arts students um, are serving you a wonderful breakfast. I will have you enjoy your breakfast. And then once we get a little bit into, um, into, into the breakfast, I will start the presentation so that we can move the presentation forward. Thank you again and welcome. But in the meantime, I know that, that everyone has a busy day, um, so I will begin the presentation. Please continue eating if you have not yet finished, um, but we are going to move forward with, with the presentation. As you know, this year is a very special year for Neshoba Tech. We are celebrating 50 years, uh, very exciting. Um, and it's given us really an opportunity here at Neshoba Tech to reflect on those 50 years and really take a look at how special it is that we have had relationships with our towns for 50 years, providing high quality, skills focused, public, technical education for our students. So this, um, this image was actually created by, these are our actual students, um, and this image was created by our design and visual students, and we've used it on um, many of our materials for this year. Um, if, we'll go to the next slide. We already did the intros. The logo that you see on your name tags, the logo that you see on your pin, this was designed by Calandra Booten of Pepperell. Where's Pepperell? Congratulations, she's an amazing young lady. Um, so a special thank you to Calandra for this design. Um, it's, it's beautiful, we're, we're very proud of it, and you will see it everywhere um, this year and in the years to come. As part of the 50th celebration, we also did a rebranding of our website. So we have a new Neshoba Valley Technical High School website. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do. Again, you'll see featuring our wonderful new logo, celebrating our 50 years of partnership with our towns. Along with our new website, this was very exciting for us, we moved forward with an app for our school district, All Things Neshoba Tech, and I'm gonna show you a brief video about the app and how it works, and I hope that some of you today will download that app if you haven't already. 
Introducing the brand new app for Neshoba Valley Technical School District on Android and iPhone. It's everything Neshoba Valley Tech in your pocket. This is the home screen. Tap the three horizontal lines in the top left or swipe right to see all the menu items. To turn on push notifications, tap Settings and select Turn on Notifications. This app makes applying to Neshoba Tech even easier. Under Menu, click Apply Here to complete the online application for high school students. The Events section shows a list of all events throughout the district. You can use this button to add an event to your calendar or tap here to share the event with friends and family. Live Feed is where you'll find updates from administration about what's going on in the district right now. Whether that's celebrating a student's success or reminding you about an upcoming deadline. Search Neshoba Valley Technical HS in the App Store or Play Store to explore the app for yourself. It's everything Neshoba Valley Tech in your pocket. Again, we were very excited to have this app released this year. Um, we know that the students have been downloading it, our parents have been downloading it. We hope that you take advantage of it as well. From the app on your phone, um, you can access all of our public meetings. I know that would be of interest to this group. Um, we do post our public meetings on the events calendar, which you could then download to, to your um, Google Calendar. In addition, there would be the link to our school committee page, which is our board docs web page, which is where we house our agendas and our minutes. Um, and after this meeting, and as we go forward with public hearing, we'll be adding a new link for the FY21 budget and all of the budget materials. Our goal this year is to go much more paperless. We are creating a, a beautiful budget book as we have in the past, but we're going to be printing less copies and going more digital um, and encouraging folks to download the app and or go direct to our website for those materials. Again, all designed by students in-house in our design and visual program. The app was not um, designed in-house, was part of our website, but very proud of it. So again, Neshoba Tech, who are we? We're represented by the, the eight wonderful towns that are here today. Little history, um, again, our, our four founding towns. Uh, we added more in 79, and then our mo most recent addition is AIR, which as you know, those from AIR, you've been participating as basically a member for many, many years, um, well before 2012. I always like to talk about historical enrollment before we talk about budgets, because as you know, the enrollment does drive the assessments to the towns. Um, and we like to look at it from a broad stroke perspective to understand our enrollment trends. So the last couple of years, for those of you who've been attending the breakfast for, for a while now, you know that the last few years we did have a slight decline in enrollment. Um, this year, we've had the opposite. We had a, a slight increase in enrollment. So we had an increase of 18 students overall, and an increase of, of 15 of those 18 are district students. So we're seeing an increase. We've also had an increase of um, school choice and non-resident students. How that breaks itself out into the current student population that will drive the FY21 uh, budget. You can see we had um, some towns that had increases in enrollment, some towns that had decreases in enrollment, and Westford had no change in enrollment um, and how it breaks down. This is important, again, when we get to the assessment page because your, um, your town's enrollment, again, is the factor that we use to calculate the assessment. And in addition, the percentage of your overall student population is also a factor in calculating the percentage. So you can see that um, historically, and this has been true for quite some time, Chelmsford is our largest town, Pepperell is our second largest town, and you can see through the chart um, the enrollment trends by town. I also want to point out um, our special populations and how that differs from the state average. I think this is important to understand when we talk about budgets. Um, these are the, the October 1 uh, breakout for our special populations. We are seeing a slight increase in our students um, whose first language is not English and a, a slight increase in our English language learner population from the past. Um, it is still well below the state average, but it's actually on par with our district towns in terms of, of this particular special population. Um, students with disabilities is one that I always do point out as well, because historically Neshoba has a much higher percentage of students with disabilities um, than our sending towns. So we're well above the state average. Um, the, we are at 33%. We're often between 33%. Um, percent. We've been as high as 38%. Um, closer to 40% at some times, but for this particular 
um, enrollment season, 33% is the calculation. The, the state average, 18.4%. If you look at just high schools alone, um, again, we are just a high school, so 33% of our high school students um, are special needs students, and um, if you were to compare that to our district towns, it's probably more around 11 or 12% at the high school level. Um, high needs, again, almost half of our population would be considered high needs based on the, the, the calculation at the state, um, which is on par with, with the state average. And economically disadvantaged is, is a bit below, but again, on par with our area. Um, again, when you talk about budgets, it's important to take a look back to the previous year and look at how we're doing on accountability factors, because again, this is what drives all that we do. Um, some of the accountability measures that I think are important to talk about, um, attendance. We historically have an attendance rate that is well above, or not well above, but above the state average, um, which we think is, is wonderful because this is one of the most important pieces of a future workforce. You want them to have great attendance, you want them to show up. Um, so our students still have attendance rates above the state average, we're proud of that. Um, our graduation rates are also above the state average, we do very well in this area a low dropout rate, and 100% of our students are completing rigorous coursework. Very proud of that. Um, this piece of data is my favorite piece of data. It really is what matters. After students graduate from here, as a regional vocational technical high school, we are required by law to conduct a follow-up study. We are the only type of school district in the state that's required to do this. High schools, in, in a traditional setting, will conduct um, a survey when students are graduating, which is called the plans of high school graduates, which is where we grab the data that says X number of our students are going to college, X number of our students are going here. This data is what they actually do, not what they said they were gonna do, but what they actually do. One year after graduation, we go out with a survey, we reach out to the students, we reach out to the families, and we collect that data, and we are graded on what's called positive placement, and this is through Perkins. Um, whether or not the student was actually positive placed one year after graduation, which means they are either um, employed, they're pursuing some type of post-secondary education, whether it's traditional college or in their post-secondary field or trade, um, or they've entered the military. And our, post, our positive placement rates um, are always excellent. You can see our, our figures along the line. This is, this is how we grade ourselves as a school district. Um, I also want to take a few minutes to introduce you to our new principal because again when you talk about budgets it's really important to understand what those budgets are funding. Um, we have a new principal this year, Mr. Jeremy Slotnick. He is new to the role of principal but certainly not new to Neshoba Tech. He has been here for 15 years, um, started here as an English teacher after coming from a, another regional vocational school district, uh, moved his way up to our academic coordinator in charge of testing and MCAS. Um, then became our assistant principal and is now proudly serving as, as our principal of Neshoba Tech. He's going to talk to you a little bit more about the high school perspective um, or the high school level programming that we offer here. Thank you, Denise. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. So uh, first, Denise mentioned I've been in vocational education for quite a while, 23 years total, and I never really expected it to end up there. Uh, I was from a, a very traditional academic background. My family really stressed that academic background, and I thought I would really only stay in, in voc ed for maybe a couple years. But as I got into vocational education, I really saw the, the value. I learned as a teacher that as many students as you have, that's also how many learning styles you have. And what I found great was that vocational education, while it may not be the right place for every kid, there were many, many students who really benefited well from it. And I think it's great that we have a partnership with all our sending towns that allows us to give that option to the kids who are best suited for it. And they have great opportunities both in their comprehensive schools in our towns, but also here at Neshoba Tech, at your public vocational school as well. So that message really came across to me early on. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, and, and we do try to do things a little bit differently here both in our academic classes and our vocational programs. Um, as it mentions up there, we stress with our academic teachers that it's important that they remember the, the type of student who's most successful with us and that they push activities that are hands-on and project-based in our academics. And our teachers do a great job of that. 
So another thing a lot of people don't realize is what it really means to be at a vocational school and how that might differ from a comprehensive school where they have an elective that's also related to one of our technical programs. Uh, we have state vocational frameworks and there are experts who get together uh, on an annual basis and review those and make sure that they have a, a clear understanding of what is really needed for someone to be successful out in the field. And our students are held responsible for those by the time they graduate if they're going to earn a certificate of proficiency in their trade area. There's a, a program called uh, Skills Plus and at the end of every year teachers have to go in and go through the skills that students were supposed to learn and grade the students mastery in those areas and in order to get that certificate upon graduation students need to have demonstrated that proficiency in I believe it's 75 percent of those skills and there are hundreds of these skills in every trade area so you can be sure that these students are really well prepared upon graduation in addition we have advisory boards in every program and those are people from industry who get together at least twice a year and make recommendations to our teachers about what should be in their programs as far as equipment, facilities, teaching methods, and they really work to make sure that the education our students get here in their trade area is going to really benefit you know, the greater society, make them productive, make them employable, really get them ready for the world of work. Um, also, our kids have minimally 900 hours in their trade area. So that's much different than what they would get in a non-vocational school where they might have an elective where they're only 45 minutes or an hour each day spent in that field. Um, the state comes in and, and inspects to make sure our facilities and equipment are up to par, that's safe, that it's industry standard, and that it's going to really serve our students well. So that's another benefit we have here at Neshoba Tech. And our instructors are really dual threats. They're certified teachers, trained teachers, but they've also spent a minimum of five years out in the trade. So they really know what it takes to be successful and they're experts at getting that knowledge out to our students. So as you're probably aware at this point, we have 20 technical programs, quite a wide number. Uh, we're appealing to, to many different students. Some of them are very traditional programs, electrical, automotive, culinary arts, cosmetology, but we also try to, to stay current with uh, new technology and also with what is needed as far as employability in our area. So we look at, at surveys of our towns and of our region and based on that we add programs. Things like veterinary assisting, things like biotechnology, we really try to, to stay with what's current and we've done a really good job of that as well. Um, as far as our, our academics go, uh, we know that while students are here for a vocational education, it's also important that they get a good academic uh, education as well. So at the high end we have advanced placement classes, we have concurrent enrollment which is where students can receive credit uh, from community colleges here in the state while they're taking classes here and then we also have a dual enrollment program where our students can go out to colleges and get college credit that way. And in fact 60 percent of our students go on to some sort of post-secondary education whether that be a two-year school, a four-year school, or a technical uh, post-secondary school. Um, in addition, there are academics in, in all of our technical programs as well. Uh, part of the technical strands are management and entrepreneurship. We know that some of our kids are going to go out to start businesses when they graduate, and so part of their technical education is teaching them how to go about creating those businesses. Uh, we also have employability and career readiness as a strand in every technical program to make sure that kids not only know how to perform in their trade area, but what it means to, to be employable, what skills you need to be successful in the 21st century out in the world of work. And in all of our core classes, we offer a, a variety of levels. I mentioned the advanced placement. We have honors. We have college prep. We have small group classes. Dr. Pigeon mentioned that we tend to have a, a larger special education population than a lot of places. We pride ourselves on the fact that we really do a good job with that population, and those kids are successful with us. Uh, we consider uh, the communities that, that send students to us and the businesses in those communities real partners for us. Uh, we have cooperative placement where students, once they've served two years learning their trade, are able to go out and find a job in their trade area, and instead of coming here to school to learn their trade, they actually go out and, and work with a company and get paid and continue to learn directly on the job. That's cooperative placement. We've also added internship recently, and that's similar to cooperative placement, except it's of shorter duration. It wouldn't last the whole year, and uh, students don't get paid for that. It's purely a learning opportunity. And uh, some of our trade areas are more suited to that because it's, it's just difficult to find a, a paying job, uh, say in engineering or dental assisting, but our students still get that hands-on experience by going out to businesses and, and really learning. 
Um, we also have clinical experiences in many of our trade areas. Uh, for example, um, the, uh, the assisted uh, memory assisted living uh, center next door to us, Bridges, our health assisting students go there. And we also have veterinary assistant students going to Nevin's Farm in Methuen, where uh, they work with large animals, horses, uh, sheep, and small animals there as well, cats and dogs. So that's a great experience. And then also to work with our community, we have partnerships right in house. We have the full service branch of Lowell 5, and we also have our veterinary clinic, MSPCA Angel, right here in the building. Uh, we also know that just because our students have have chosen a vocational school doesn't mean that they don't have interests outside their vocational area. So we try to make sure that they have access to all of the same sorts of extracurricular activities that they would at, uh, at our other town high schools. Uh, and many of those are listed up there. Some are very specific to technical programs. Skills USA is a, a state, uh, actually national uh, contest in which students compete within their trade area. We had a, a student who was a gold medalist last year, went all the way to the national competition in Louisville and beat every other student from the other 50 states and was a gold medalist. We're very proud of that. Um, and then we also have DECA, for example, which is a, a marketing-based uh, competition. And one of the students you'll meet later was actually a, a national uh, finalist at DECA last year. So she'll probably talk about that. And then in addition, we have 18 athletic programs across all three seasons, just like you would at, at uh, most high schools. And our students are great participants in that as well. So as far as our admissions process goes, uh, we really start to, to heat up our uh, admissions drive in the fall. We start advertising and the first Sunday in November, every year since I've been here, we have our open house where we open up the building to families and community members from all over our district. Uh, we get hundreds of families every time and it's a great chance to really show off the school and what we have to offer. In addition, in case some people weren't able to make it or have additional questions, our guidance department hosts monthly tours that uh, families can call us up and come in and, and have a chance to ask questions and see the building and what we have to offer. And we also, every fall and every spring, do a program called Mini Exploratory, where the middle schools in the area can send us students and they can experience an after-school program free of charge in a number of our technical programs. Um, as of, this is our third year that we are doing the application online. It's very easy for, for students and their families to log in and fill out the application information. And that has been a great process for us. And uh, we have rolling admissions, so we have an admissions committee. And that committee meets, uh, at this point we're meeting every week or two, and reviewing applications as those come in. Uh, those are district applications only at this time. And uh, we are currently beginning to enroll students for the fall of 2020. Uh, Dr. Pigeon mentioned that we had an increase in enrollment in this past year, and based on the numbers, what they look like so far, we may, again, have an increase in enrollment. We're pretty excited about how much great buzz we've gotten in the community with the 50th anniversary and the new website. Uh, so we, we are lucky enough to have several students with us today. Um, every year we pick two to three students as student representatives to our school committee here at Neshoba Tech. And uh, we often try to feature them quite a bit because they're such impressive young people that we're so proud of. So today we have those individuals here and I'm actually gonna have them stand up and come right over here and ask them a few questions, really put them on the spot to, to tell you a little more about why we're proud of them. So we have Brianna Schmoyer, Abigail Cronin, and Donald Frazier. And so I am going to just start and ask you to tell us a little bit about yourselves, introduce yourselves to everyone. Hi, my name is Brianna Schmoyer. I'm a senior in culinary arts. I am on the student advisory representative for my shop. And I have helped my team win multiple awards from Taste of Middlesex and Taste of Neshoba. I won third place at districts at Skills USA this past year. I'm attending AP Literature and AP Physics, and I'm thoroughly enjoying them both. I'm very hands-on and visual learner, so culinary really fits well for me. I'm Abby Cronin. I'm a senior in the marketing program here. Um, I've been a lot of, uh, part of a lot of clubs here. I am senior class president. I was junior class treasurer as well. I've been a part of the DECA club. Well, I was for 
my sophomore and junior year. Unfortunately, I had to take my senior year off. But my sophomore year, I won first place in my role play category, and I advanced onto the state competition. Last year, I won second place at my role play uh, competition at districts, and I moved on to the state competition. And I also participated in a writing project that brought me all the way to the national competition in Orlando, Florida. Um, I work in the Lowell Five branch bank um, as a part of my shop. I also help operate the school store. Outside of here, I have a part-time job. I work at O'Neill Cinemas in Littleton um, as part of the floor staff, and I'm also a competitive dancer about four days a week. And next year, I'm going to be going to college as a dance major. Hi, my name's DJ, and I've been fortunate enough to be a part of many different clubs, activities, and sports. Um, I've been a part of the football team, where we've won a couple championships over the last few years. Uh, in wrestling, we won a championship, and individually, individually, I won a sectional championship last year. Looking forward to that coming up in the next couple weeks. Um, I'm part of the National Honor Society and National Technical Honor Society, and I'm also enrolled in early college, as Mr. Slotnick mentioned. Oh, and also co-op I have. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm employed by Mass Electrical Contractors and I go to work for them every other week. Thank you, glad you have so much free time, guys. <laughs> so could you also talk about why you chose to come to Neshoba Tech and why you feel like it was a, a good choice that you ended up here? I decided to join Neshoba Tech because I had a passion for cooking. I wanted to learn everything and anything I could in that category. Um, Neshoba Tech's kitchen and staff absolutely blew me away when I came. I'm actually from Harvard, so this isn't my district school. I had checked out some other schools, and this one just totally, you know, took the cake. It was amazing. Um, so I consider myself a very hardworking, diligent student, but um, when I was Back in my town district, I struggled a lot with just sitting in the classroom every day and going and taking all my core classes and things like that. So I decided to come here to kind of explore other things that I was interested in. I really appreciate that every other week, instead of going to my standard everyday classes, I can go do something that I'm really passionate about. I work as a bank teller, a student bank teller, and I know how to kind of work the back end of a store POS system, and I've had a lot of real life experience that I appreciate and I feel like it's really, really helpful. And so I kind of just wanted to explore more of the real life aspect of things. So in middle school, I was a lot like Abby and I didn't really like sitting in class and um, having to not be able to work with my hands every day or be moving around a lot. And a big part of why I came here was my dad told me about how you could either go to college or go to Neshoba Tech and learn a skill, and I just saw that as a better opportunity to not have to be in debt or anything like that and just learn a skill that I can bring with me wherever I go. And uh, some of you have touched on this a little, but as far as your plans for next year, do you know where you'll be a year from now? So I don't know exactly where I'll be f a year from now, except for I'll be at Johnson & Wales in Providence. Um, I'm either getting my bachelor's in culinary arts or sustainability in culinary arts. It's a brand new program they have there, so I'm just not sure which one I want. Um, and that's all I have. <laughs> so I've been dancing for about 14 years, so I've decided to pursue that um, at a four-year college. I'm not exactly sure which college I'm going to yet. I've been accepted so far to Temple University in Philadelphia. So I'm hoping to pursue my Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in dance. And after coming here and experiencing the marketing and business program, it's also another part of me that I'm not ready to quite let go of. So I'm hoping to either pursue a double major or minor in business or accounting, communications, anything like that. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do yet, but I have a few opportunities in front of me. Um, as far as electrical will go, I could stay with the company that I'm with now and continue on to night classes to earn my electrical license. And I've also applied to the local 103 electrical union. Um, I've taken an aptitude test for them, and I'm waiting to hear back on how well I did, and hopefully I can get accepted to that. 
where um, there's just a lot of opportunity there. Uh, one day a week, instead of going to work, you actually go right down to the Union Hall in Dorchester, and they have individual classes, and over five years you learn different um, skills in the trade to fine tune what you know. And last question here, I promise. So if you were talking to an eighth grader who were considering coming here to Neshoba Tech next year, what advice would you give them? Um, if I was talking to an eighth grader, the advice I'd give them was that if they're really interested and passionate about learning about something, that they have nothing to lose for going into that. Um, Learning about culinary, everything and anything about it is just so interesting to me. Because we have to do theory in our shops, which is sitting in the classroom and learning about things. Which a lot of kids get discouraged about because that's what they thought they were getting away from. But if you're doing something that you really care about, then all of that is just still so interesting and intriguing. And it just benefits you when you're on your feet doing it hands on. Um, I have had the opportunity to not only excel academically, but technically coming to this school. Um, I hadn't joined, if I hadn't joined this school, I would not have had any of the opportunities life has given me these past four years. I am 18th of my class, I'm in Honors and Technical Honors Society, and I'm in three AP classes with all A's so far. You never know what could happen unless you push yourself, and that's what I told all of the freshmen that came through when I was a junior. If I was talking to an eighth grader that was wanting to come here, I would just talk about the endless outstanding opportunities that this school has offered me. I would definitely would not be where I am today without anything that this school has done for me. Um, I am especially appreciative of the special education department here who diagnosed my dyslexia in 10th grade. Um, they worked with me and they taught me all the skills that I needed to learn and now I'm ranked fifth in my class. I take three AP classes this year and one honors class and I just believe that all the classes and your experience in your shop, everything this school has to offer you will definitely set you up for success wherever you wanna be. I believe that if you're torn between just wanting to work or going to college, going to a vocational school is a very much an advantage to anybody that isn't quite sure what they wanna do with their life moving forward. I would tell any eighth grader on the fence about coming here, just first go to and take a tour of your local high school and see what it has to offer you because you really want to become educated on the next four years of your life and what's setting up your future. And then come here to one of our open houses and take a walk through the shops and just see everything that we have to offer you and I can assure you that it's going to be a lot more. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic job. I thought you'd be good, but you were way better than I even imagined, so really well done. Thank you. Uh, the students, they do, they get me every time you had me in tears. Um, just amazing, amazing students. I'm so thankful for all they have given back to us as well with, with the service that they have done coming to our school committee meetings each month, sharing about their school community. Um, and always very tough to, to move on to a presentation after something like that. So I'm going to go right to even more accolades, which is our award-winning um, culinary arts students who've been just, if you read the papers, winning, winning awards left and right. I want to take a moment for a round of applause for the students who served this breakfast. I also shared, and I'm going to let you know, uh, let you in on a secret. This morning, I came in at 8 o'clock, and the tables were out, but that was about it. Um, and I'll admit, I was nervous for about a second. Um, the bell rang after homeroom, and all of these students came flying through that door and just got to work. And in 15, 20 minutes, this place was um, beautiful and set. So next time we have a major function, I've already roped in TV media. They're going to film you as you set up, and then we're going to do one of those speed videos and, and, and be able to show how quickly you can set for an amazing event like this. So in addition to the setup in the front of the house, we know how hard you're working in the kitchen. Next year, I'm going to feature that video here at the town officials' breakfast. So thank you again. Thanks. 
I have a few more slides to share the good news from the past year, and then we will get into the budget slides, I promise. Um, some great news, as you know, we continue to be very rigorous in terms of applying for competitive grants. We've been most fortunate to have been um, award recipients of the Governor's Workforce Skills Cabinet Grants. We're actually hoping to be able to put another one on this slide very soon for culinary arts and hotel restaurant management. Stay tuned. Um, and we also recently received a state Wi-Fi grant. And um, actually, I want to take a minute to talk about the last one. We were very fortunate to receive a safety grant this year. And I have to say that I know that the safety grant came as a result of a partnership with the town of Westford. Uh, Westford has done some amazing work. Um, they reached out to me and afforded me the opportunity to participate on a committee um, that went forward with doing a, a, an assessment, a safety assessment of all school buildings. And they allowed Neshoba Tech to partner with them to do a, an audit, essentially, of our safety. I know that that process is really what made our grant application so strong and why we received the um, competitive grant along with Westford Public Schools. So, I wanted to publicly thank Westford for allowing us to participate in that. So again, as you can see, we do, um, we do try to offset the costs through competitive grants. Um, we, again, another face that you're familiar with at this point, um, every year the Commissioner of Education, this year Commissioner Riley, they pick five students statewide to be represented, um, represented at the national level as a CTE or career technical education presidential scholar. This is another first for Neshoba Tech. Not only did we have one student selected, we had two. Two of the five people selected statewide to go on to nationals right here at Neshoba Tech and you met one of them today. Just amazing. And congratulations to Groton and Chelmsford as well. Um, Skills USA, I know you heard a bit about that as well. Um, another first for Neshoba Tech, I think Mr. Slotnick mentioned it. Um, we had a national gold medal, national gold medal this past year, so very proud of it. Um, in addition, these are the folks that you see here. Um, I won't go through all of the names, but we had several of our students earn at the state level, go on to nationals, and came home with a, with a, with a national medal as well, um, representing many of our towns, um, as you can see up there from the slide. Another first for Neshoba Tech, uh, we were the first vocational school in the state to earn this designation. It was quite a rigorous process. We've always had an early college program here for many, many, many years, long before I came, um, but there were some new criteria in order to receive the state designation. Um, thank you to Ms. White, who worked so hard on this. We were the first technical school in Massachusetts to gain the designation, and we were honored um, with a visit um, with Governor Baker. Essentially, students that come here, instead of having to go off to college to take coursework, they can stay right here on campus and, and graduate with 12 credits um, from taking courses right here on campus. At no charge. At no charge. Yes, at no charge. Correct. Um, We've had a very busy year in terms of capital projects. Last year at Springtown Meeting, as you know, we had two different warrant articles. We had the traditional budget warrant article, and then we also had the MSBA project article. Very pleased to share with all of you 100% support from our towns on this. Um, it was very well received, and thank you. We know it was an incredibly aggressive timeline. Thank you, Paul Jay in the back corner over there. Thank you, Jean. Um, this whole process went so quickly. The day school got out, anyone who lives in Westford or drives down 110, the day school got out, they dropped all the materials in the front. I'm um, sure I'm seeing some smiles, so I know you saw it all summer. We had some nervous phone calls. Are, are you sure it's going to be gone before school starts? Lawrence shaking his head day before. Denise, are you sure that's going to be out? Um, true to their word, that project was done in the summer months, and all of the materials were gone the day before school started. School went off without a hitch. We did not have any um, instructional issues, and three major sections of the roof were completed. Solar panels off, new roof, solar panels on. Um, in addition to that, we did replace the Cal walls, which is the picture on the, on the bottom over there. Um, above all of our technical programs, the previous windows had no insulation value at all. So this has been a big improvement for our school district. It was a um, very busy summer. Thank you so much for your support. In a later slide, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about how the debt worked out. It did work out how we had hoped. Um, in addition to that, not that we weren't busy enough. Um, we decided that we still had to move forward on other capital projects as well, but we've been really pushing involving the students in our capital projects. We have so much skill and talent in this building, we use that to our advantage. So what you see here in the first two pictures um, was actually very recently, a couple weeks ago, I was walking down the hallway and said, I need a picture of that um, for upcoming presentations. These are our electrical students and they told me all about it. They were running banana wire. 
Why is it called banana wire? Well, it's yellow, of course. <laughs> um, they were actually working on um, part of that safety grant and um, adding to that safety grant to improve some of our safety programming here. Um, and that's what they were doing in this particular picture. In addition, um, electrical students have changed over 250 light fixtures to LED and added in motion sensors um, in just a couple of months and is expected to save us um, thousands on our electricity bill moving forward. So that's been a wonderful um, joint project. On the right hand side, you see students, and on the next slide, working in um, the redesign of our health assisting and dental assisting program. You heard that we received the big grant, uh, which is an equipment grant. So we did receive equipment, but we knew we needed to upgrade the facilities as well. Students are doing all of the work, construction, electrical, plumbing. We had some engineering, designing work going on, um, all student driven, and it's going very well. We're so proud of them. Um, now we get into the, the specifics about the budget. This is a real bird's eye view of, of the budget broken down by um, the general fund expenses. But when we set out to build this budget, uh, we, we know that times are tough. We're aware of that. We, um, we, did, we knew that we were going to have to work hard to make sure that we had costs that were controllable and reasonable. Um, it was very difficult, I'm not going to lie. I know you're all in the same process as well. It was very difficult to come in um, with the FY21 budget at this um, increase. So the total combined expense increase this year is a 3.26% increase. The past two years, we were able to come in under two. We just were not able to do that and continue with the services that we need to provide for our students. Um, big picture view, again, if you look at administration, um, actually a bit of a savings there. So we, we've cut out some supplies. As you know, there's always contractual increases, um, personnel increases, but we were able to cut out uh, other things such as equipment and supplies to keep that at a reasonable budget. Um, the next section, instruction, you have to add the two numbers together if you're looking at it, otherwise it looks like a large jump and it's not. You would add the 2000s from the general fund and the 2000s at the bottom of the slide. In terms of instruction, this was about a 3.1% increase overall. Again, most of that is contractual increases. Um, we were able to actually save some in staffing because we are anticipating a big um, amount of retirements coming forward. This year we have three technical teachers retiring and two academic. Um, so we were able to um, anticipate that the salaries of incomings might be slightly lower in, in cases. Um, other instructional increases that we must do, um, you know, we can't hold off on math textbooks if we need those math textbooks. So we have a math textbook charge, um, we have some Chromebook fees that we have to pay or, or, or new Chromebooks that we have to purchase, um, and that is all under that 2000 line. But again, 3.1% increase in that category. Um, pupil services, this is, a, this is attendance, this is the nurse's office. Again, we were able to keep those costs um, pretty stable. Um, operations and maintenance, not as easy. Again, we're so proud that we're celebrating 50 years, but on the other side, that does mean we have a 50-year-old building, um, and we can't just let things go. When something is broken, we need to fix it. If something's going to be broken, we want to fix it before it's broken, um, if we can. So again, um, increases that we see in operations and maintenance that, that are uncontrollable. Um, benefits, benefits and fixed charges, I know, is something that um, we're all talking about. Um, one of the larger increases that we've had to experience in terms of, um, I know I've heard the town managers talking about the increase to Middlesex. We also have our health insurance. So as a regional vocational technical school district, which is different from some of our towns, our budget includes all of those costs. It includes the, the benefits, the health insurance. It includes all of that, um, where those of you, those towns that are familiar with working with two regionals, like Pepperell or Townsend um, or Groton, some of our other towns, um, those expenses are carried on the town side and not in the school budget. So I think it's important to, to point that out. Um, in terms of debt, I know this was this is a question that a burning question that folks had because of the MSBA project. So when we went out with the Warren article last year, we timed it that way on purpose. We knew that last year we were paying off the final payment of the previous roof project. So we tried to time the roof project to debt coming off, debt going on. That way there wouldn't be wide variations in, de in the debt costs to the towns and we could try to keep that reasonable. Um, it worked out very well. So the in overall increase in debt, overall increase is 25,000 for this amazing project that was done, um, which then is uh, apportioned out to the towns and we'll get to that on a later slide. 
Um, but again, overall, the combined total expense is 3.26%. Um, in full transparency, I know I've been very, very uh, vocal with uh, town managers talking to them about this. Um, when we talk about the assessment, one of the things that we are working together on is weaning off the use um, of school choice at the aggressive rate that we have been using it. We do not take in millions in school choice every year, yet if you look at the slide down at the bottom, in FY19, we spent over um, 1.4 million from school choice, which is essentially one-time funds to offset the budget. Um, I talked to you about it at that point, that we needed to start moving in the other direction and moving down um, so that the money doesn't run out. And then in one year, all of a sudden, assessments skyrocket um, because school choice is gone. Um, and now it would, it would be a, a huge incremental increase. So you can see how that we are incrementally going down in terms of the use of school choice. Um, to fund the budget, which is something that I hear in the town side as well, uh, you know, weaning off the use of free cash to uh, balance the budget. But we're trying to do this in an incremental fashion. So this slide is the traditional slide that folks are um, pretty familiar with that shows how the draft assessment breaks out by member towns. Um, again, the earlier part of my presentation where it talks about enrollment, this is why enrollment is so important because your district students um, on the left, show the portion of the pie in terms of your overall enrollment to the towns, and then it works across. So the number that we have no control over is the, num the, the third column where it says town's minimum contribution. Now this year, with the passing of the Student Opportunities Act, we've all been sitting and waiting to, to, to learn how is this going to affect us, are we going to see more funds, um, what will happen with the passing of the Student Opportunities Act. Uh, I'm sure you've heard this as well. Um, more than 50% of school districts did not receive anything more than $30 per student. Um, and Neshoba Tech falls in that category as well. So in our increase in Chapter 78 was $30 per student, uh, about you know, under $20,000 essentially. Um, but what did go up, which is going up for two reasons. One, one reason is due to the changes in the formula and also changes in enrollment, the town's minimum contribution has gone up over um, 650,000 in minimum. Um, across the board, the, the rest of it, we level funded, um, we level funded in, in all of the other categories from last year. So the only real changes in the assessment is in the minimum contribution column um, and in the debt service column, which is the increase of the 25,000. So that's, that's really it um, in terms of the assessment. Uh, I will work individually with each town to help you go over how that affects you in terms of increases and decreases. I've had an opportunity to speak to many of the town managers in the last week, and I'm absolutely willing to come and talk to finance committees, board of selectmen, anybody that wants to understand their particular town's changes um, and our budget from a, a more, um, you know, in, in perspective in terms of getting more into um, specifics rather than the bird's eye view that I shared with you today. Always willing to do that. Um, in terms of the funding, again, this is the anticipated funding. Oh, sorry about that. Um, this breaks out that information in a different way. So the funding that comes from the minimum um, contribution and then the total member assessments, uh, what we're anticipating in state transportation reimbursement, what we're anticipating for Chapter 70 aid. You can see that was not much of an increase. It was that $30 that we spoke of. We are expecting um, a larger E&D than last year. Um, and traditionally, we have always done this. Most vocational schools don't do this. Most regional schools don't do this. Um, we have a long history of giving back 100% of our excess and deficiency to offset the budget. Um, we've been doing that as long as I can remember. Um, and we're going to continue to do that. Because we're expecting an increase, that's actually been helpful because that's going to help us fund some OPEB, which is the later slide. Um, and you see the school choice, which I've already mentioned. So OPEB, I'm pleased to share with you that because we have an OPEB trust, because we've been meeting, because we've made some changes in what we're doing, and thank you to Paul Cohen, um, and thank you to Andrew McLean for serving on that trust with us. Um, our liability has gone down significantly, so very happy about that. Um, our trust balance right now is just over 800,000. We are proposing to fund it this year. I know that was a, a big discussion that I heard when I was out in the towns, um, was the importance of OPEB and, and wanting to see us continue to move forward with this because by funding OPEB, we're actually helping um, everyone in the long run. Um, we're proposing funding it next year at 150,000 and taking it from that um, E&D. 
So next steps in our process. Um, everything that you've seen today is, is technically draft. Um, on Tuesday night, later today, we'll be posting for our public hearing on the budget, which is at 6.30 on Tuesday night, and it's going to be hosted in our library. We are going to be filming it. Um, that is a, a promise that we've made to you, that we try to film uh, three events a year. We, we, we film the budget breakfast, we film the meeting where, where our auditor presents to the school committee, and we film the, um, the annual budget presentation and the public hearing on the budget, which will then be linked to our board doc site. Um, again, that will be in our library. Um, and then we start our town meetings, and our first town meeting, as you know, is in March in Westford. Um, have to point out that, again, community service projects. I know I was talking to a couple of folks today. We've had some great projects going on. I feel bad that we can't always do every project every year, but please keep asking, and we'll keep working with you. Uh, we're building sheds in Townsend. We're, you know, we're, we're always doing something. Um, anything we can do to help, we want to make sure that, that we, we work with you to do that. Um, if you get any ideas based on some of our capital work, um, please give me a call. I also wanted to just take one last slide. Um, one of the most frequent questions that I get is, you know, can I come in and use the auto tech program at Neshoba Tech? Or, you know, when is the restaurant open? Uh, we're going to do a better job this year informing the public, and I'm going to actually put this right in the budget book, of all the services that are offered here at Neshoba Tech and how to access them. Because as residents, this is a benefit that they have from their regional technical school district. So Angel at Neshoba, our vet clinic, anyone can access it. They do service folks who um, have, re have reduced income. There are special programs for reduced rates. But that doesn't mean that anybody can't use it. They do still take, take um, full pay clients. And I will tell you, Dr. Sawyer um, in the clinic is amazing. She's amazing. Um, Lowell 5, again, we have a branch right here on campus. We also have the wonderful ATM. I've seen many of you go by and use it. I know I use it all the time. Um, Cosmo Cut Salon, fabulous. They're open several days a week. We'll give you all the information on how to call and make an appointment. They also do fabulous nails. The restaurant, I know many of you have experienced the restaurant. Um, a great secret that we don't want to be a secret is that we run an early learning center and children, people can enroll their toddlers and preschoolers in our, in our ECC program run by certified teachers and then our um, practicing teachers have an opportunity to, to work with the young, young children as well. Auto body and automotive, very busy programs, great service. They do everything from like the basics, oil changes, change your tires, I got Sandy putting her thumbs up. Amazing work and at a very reduced cost. We don't charge for labor, we just charge for materials and maybe a hazmat fee depending on what the work is. Um, and design and visual, everything you see printed here all done in-house, designed and printed in-house. We can help you with those needs as well. And um, our programming and web teacher really wants to start making um, more use of, of his students' talents. So if your town websites need any help or any other web needs, um, I think they, they, they're they maybe a little offend, offended that they didn't design the Shobatex app, but maybe they wanted to design your town app. So just let us know. There's so much talent in this building. The more we allow them to use it, the more they get to shine. Um, and the, we also get to benefit as well from those services. So again, I'll be putting this out in our presentations as we move forward. Um, and again, that's the end of the formal presentations. I'd be glad to take questions. Um, also introduce you to Jean if there's any other questions. And I'm also glad to work with you individually as needed. Thank you. Are there any questions for the whole group? Okay. Well, thank you. Again, I will be um, reaching out and meeting with Towns individually. Thank you again. Thank you.